All right, ladies and gentlemen, since we're in the chapter where we're solving equations, I decided to put on my Long John Solvers hat, my pirate hat, Arr. But anyway, uh, again, my agent got me an endorsement contract with Long John Solvers, so thank you very much for the product placement. And now I just, uh, you know, augmented my income just a little bit. But anyway, we're in the radical equation section now. This will correspond to assignment number 14. Here's a little bit of music trivia for you. I don't know if you can hear this well. Watch what you say. They'll be calling you a radical. Anybody? Can you name the group there? I'm listening. Yeah, that's right. It's Super Tramp. That's right. You must have been raised well. So anyway, kudos to your parents for teaching you that uh, classic rock music. I guess you could call it. But anyway, here's example number one up here on the board. And again, I think it's a pretty easy identification that this would be a radical equation because it's got a radical, all right? So, like most things, I went ahead and made my family recipe for solving radical equations. This was brought over on the boat from Sweden, and I translated it into English for you. So, the first idea would be that we want to get that radical by itself. We want to isolate it, all right? So we want to get that radical that I've circled here on one side of the equation by itself. So let's see, what would we need to do to get that uh, by itself? Looks like we should subtract that 5 to the other side. That's right, Mr. Sodium Chloride is very proud of you. Thank you. So if we subtract that 5 to the other side, that'll, be, that'll get the radical by itself. So the idea would be that we want to hunt down that radical and get it by itself, all right? Um, so, as I just said, we need to hunt down that radical. There you go, we've got to hunt down that radical, okay? Hunt it down, get it by itself. That's one of my favorite episodes of B squared. Get it? Bugs Bunny, B squared. Yeah, we didn't need the explanation. Well, you know, what can I say? All right, so then the next idea would be this. Don't we want to get rid of the radical? The math word would be to eliminate that radical, all right? And so how do you get rid of a third root? That's the question, basically. Well, let's see. What's the opposite of a radical? A power, that's right. So should we square both sides? No, a square wouldn't get rid of a third power. But the point would be, whatever that radical is, we need to use a power to get rid of that radical. So we're gonna kill that radical, and that would be the next thing that we're gonna do here. We wanna get rid of the radical. Kill the radical, kill the radical, kill the radical. That's right, we want to kill the radical, okay? And so the question becomes, how do you kill a radical? Well, a power, an exponent. If that's a third root, wouldn't a third power kill that radical? So we'll raise both sides to the third power. You know, by the way, another uh, name for that is cube. So basically, we're Cuban, both sides. I don't smoke, but if I did, I guess it would be a Cuban. Ha ha ha, but on boom Yes, thank you, I can hear the laughter. But anyway, if we cube both sides, if we use an exponent, that will effectively kill the radical because the third root and the third power are inverse operations. So what occurs over here is this side becomes what's under the radical. That killed the radical. And then negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. So again, if a friend ever asked you, if you said to a friend, I want to kill a radical, I hope your answer would be, I'm going to kill that radical with an exponent. I'm going to kill a radical. How do you intend to do it? I'm going to kill the radical. A lighting hunt that will be quite a test. How will you build it? Might I inquire to ask? I will do it with my spirit and magic exponent. Your spirit and magic exponent. Spirit and magic exponent. Magic exponent. Magic exponent. Magic exponent. 
exponent. That's how you kill a radical with a magic exponent. All right, so that third root got killed with the third power. Magic exponent. And the idea would be that once that radical's dead, once we've killed it, we ought to be able to just solve what's left standing because that should be the type of equation that we've seen in the past. That remaining equation is either going to be linear, quadratic, higher degree, assignment 8, assignment 11, assignment 12. It's going to be one of those. All right, so this should be the point in time where we flash back. Right? And in this case, that's easy because the x is to the first power, and that's called a linear. So I'll take you back to that, and I hope you're all saying, oh, this is so February. Linear, come on. All you do is simplify things. You clear fractions, you distribute, you combine like terms. You can't subtract these, for example. I don't see any simplifying going on. Then you hopefully look at this and say, you know what? That 4x is a variable term, and the 3 is a constant, and we've got to get those on opposite sides of the equation. We've got to keep them separated. I'm a variable. You're a constant. We need to be apart. When it comes to variables and constants, you've got to keep them separated. You've got to keep them separated. So you add the 3 over to the other side. This should be the easy stuff, all right? But anyway, you add that over there, and after you do that, this new equation would be the offspring of the previous. I'll just leave it at that. And then you look at it and you say, hmm, that's 4 times x. I want x by itself. How do I get rid of that 4? And you divide both sides in order to make that a 1x, right? So this would be the time when we... <laughs> Wasn't that a radical time? All right, I appreciate it. That's example number one. We'll see you in a few minutes. Why don't y'all go get you, oh, I don't know, maybe some root beer to drink or something like that. And we'll see you back in a few minutes with example number two. Awesome.